the story of how Elon Musk's boring company became a self-confessed failure is an interesting one. And this is how it started. Boring tunnels have the potential to destroy subways in terms of cost and efficiency. And here's why. In case you're unfamiliar with how a trip could be this quick, here's how these tunnels would work. You drive your car onto a sled, which is then lowered into a tunnel. The sled is then moved along a track at very high speeds. Buckle up. Today, a billionaire entrepreneur announced Philadelphia will be a stop on a new super high speed transportation system. Elon Musk is using rocket technology to build tunnels, and he hopes this test site here in Los Angeles paves the way for a much bigger transit system all across the country. Billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk wants to build a high speed train connecting O'Hare Airport to downtown Chicago. You know, there's almost artful levels to this scam. A great string of insane promises without even the slightest grounding in reality, instantly regurgitated as uh, facts by the mainstream media. And it's been fascinating watching it slowly unravel over the last four years. But now it's the end of the line. Everything but signed and sealed by the boring company itself. And if you think the, the Elon Musk fans are taking this well, you know, the ones who have everlasting faith in Elon Musk. And no, this isn't a fake tweet. This is 100% genuine. Yeah, they're not taking it so well, but we'll come to that later. Meanwhile, four years ago, just as the bogus promises were really taking off. We'll let Musk's latest tweets explain just received verbal government approval for the boring company to build an underground New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, D.C. hyperloop. And why to D.C. in 29 min. Musk now vows to move travelers from New York to Washington, D.C. in under 30 minutes. 220 miles. He's talking about going 450 miles an hour here. That can't be right. Let's just check that out on the uh, boring company website. The Washington DC to Baltimore system would consist blah, blah, blah. Yes, this is that. What is Loop? Loop is a high speed underground public transportation system in which passengers are transported on autonomous electric vehicles traveling at speeds up to 150 miles per hour. It's not quite the uh, 450 that they were just proposing, but whatever. Is the idea that the Loop will become the Hyperloop someday? Loop tunnels are designed to be compatible with Hyperloop requirements. So they're already thinking about turning it into a Hyperloop. Hyperloop is a ultra high speed public transportation system in which passengers would be transported in autonomous electric pods. Yeah, I'm sure they're not just gonna turn out to be human driven taxis traveling at about 30 miles an hour. At 600 miles per hour in a pressurized cabin, DC to New York would take less than 30 minutes. Musk tweeted, just received verbal government approval for the boring company to build an underground New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, DC hyperloop. New York to DC in 29 minutes. But it wasn't just going to be the DC Hyperloop. There was also going to be a Chicago Express Loop. A tunnel for a high speed trip from downtown Chicago to O'Hare Airport. Called the Express Loop, the design is similar to Musk's plan for Los Angeles, using electric pods built by Tesla to carry 16 people at up to 150 miles per hour. Not just Chicago, but Los Angeles as well. The loop can hold up to 16 passengers, go 150 miles per hour, get someone from downtown LA to LAX in a mere eight minutes for just $1. The Hyperloop can also hold 16 passengers, but can travel some 700 miles per hour, getting someone from LA to San Francisco in only 30 minutes. But the place where they were first gonna dazzle people with this amazing new Elon Musk technology was going to be Las Vegas. The Boring Company is now proposing a high-speed underground loop. If this project gets final approval, the riders will try it, they'll like it, and that will spur Boring's expansion. Uh-huh. And what if it just happens to be really slow, chauffeur-driven cars driving in tunnels, and people find it laughably bad? What happens then? 
Musk founded the Boring Company in 2016 after complaining about LA's terrible traffic. And after four years of ceaseless development from the genius and entrepreneur Elon Musk, and the solution to all of this was a claustrophobic, underground, non-autonomous taxi, which is unusually slow. It's a uh, big canatus. I mean, you can think of these like wormholes. In, in like, oh, I need to get to the other side of LA or New York or whatever. Drop down the wormhole, phew, pop out the other side. Wow. I cannot wait to travel on this new ultra fast wormhole technology. Transporting passengers 40 feet underground at about 30 miles per hour. Now, as the lady was saying, having showcased this amazing Canatus, all of these other cities must be begging to start their own Canada system. After all, who could bear to be left behind in this amazing new breakthrough technology from this entrepreneur of um, getting in a taxi in a tunnel? Yeah, you'll be shocked to find out that uh, the only place you can find any mention of these projects at all is on the Wayback Machine because they've all been deleted from the Boring Company webpage. Yeah. I wonder what brought that on. Buckle up. Today, a billionaire entrepreneur announced Philadelphia will be a stop on a new super high-speed transportation system. Transporting passengers 40 feet underground at about 30 miles per hour. Yeah, these are the levels of overpromise and underdeliver that would make the scammiest Kickstarter blush. Like, for instance, Juno, where they were promising this, the reverse microwave. Until now, the only way to quickly cool your beverage was to put it in your freezer or an ice chest and wait. With the amazing technology packed into Juno, you can bring your drink to the perfect temperature in a matter of minutes. So we built the latest technology in thermoelectric cooling into Juno. Elon Musk is using rocket technology to build tunnels. What we discovered along the way was that Juno can do so much more than just chill wine. It can turn your freshly brewed coffee cold transform your hot tea into iced tea, and cool your favorite beer or soda right in the can. For Musk fans out there, this won't be a hyperloop. With its always-on matrix technology, that idea of the billionaires would use electromagnetic pulses to send passengers through low-pressure tubes at near supersonic speeds. This saves you precious refrigerator space and time, making it perfect for entertaining. Juno works without using environmentally harmful chemicals or traditional refrigerants ushering in a new era of cooling technology. Its modern design features a simple interface and easy to use buttons. The sleek LED status bar gives you an easy way to check when your beverage is ready. You heard the promises, a revolution in cooling drinks using brand new proprietary technology. And now just over a year later, behold the awesome future of drink cooling. With the amazing technology packed into Juno, you can bring your drink to the perfect temperature in a matter of minutes. So we built the latest technology in thermoelectric cooling into Juno. Yeah, if you bought into that and were maybe laboring under the impression that that's actually what the product would look like, and then after a year of development, it looks like this. Yeah, you might feel that this was maybe a bit of a scam. So let's take a look at the promises of the loop and what they look like after Four years of intense research and development from a tech genius, entrepreneur, and billionaire. I'm sure they're going to be much better than what was promised. It was going to be autonomous. It's not autonomous. It's regular people driving cars in a tunnel. It was going to be point to point. It's not point to point. It was going to have high capacity. It's got depressingly small capacity, as we'll come to in a moment. It was going to travel at 150 miles per hour, 30 miles per hour, in sleek pods, which are now just regular electric cars, featuring the latest in galaxy lights. The sleek LED status bar gives you an easy way to check when your beverage is ready. Well, I suppose it does have RGB lights in the tunnel, so... Yay, progress. 
Now, there will be those who are committed to the lie that will leap to its defense saying, well, Rome wasn't built in a day and there are always skeptics. I mean, look, they laughed at Galileo. They laughed at Copernicus. They laughed at the Wright brothers. So if people are laughing at it, then that means it's the next genius breakthrough. Right? So this is your typical article defending the Elon Musk loop. Confirmed. Critics of Elon Musk's Vegas loop are clueless. Yes, it's you who's clueless for not appreciating the genius of this system. Yeah, when members of the media were invited to try Elon Musk's underground tunnel system recently, that the Vegas loop took a major PR hit. You don't say. Critics tore Elon Musk, whose boring company built the system, and the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority who paid for it, a new one. Here's the thing. The critics are wrong. Cool. Let's see why the critics are wrong. The critics clearly don't understand marketing and public relations. Right, okay, uh, but obviously the boring company does, which is why the unveiling of this was such a genius PR success, right? Oh, hang on, no. In the very first line of your article, you say the Vegas loop took a major PR hit, therefore symbolizing their brilliance in understanding marketing and public relations. Yeah. Anyway, the bottom line, they're measuring the Vegas loop and success wrong. We get a chance to put the Vegas loop through its paces and we can assure you it's not a joke. What a curious thing to say. It's not a boondoggle. This someone is sounding rather defensive. And it's going to be one of the most popular and talked about attractions in the history of Las Vegas. Yeah, uh, back away slowly. Don't make eye contact. Let's get inside Elon Musk's holes. Yeah, I, I, I think I can see where this article is going. We know you don't read per se, so here's a video of Elon Musk's subterranean thrill ride attraction at the Las Vegas Convention Center, which isn't its real name, but it's Las Vegas, so give it a minute, in which you can experience the thrill of the cars travel it up to 40 miles per hour in the straight sections of the tunnel, 30 miles per hour in the turns, and um, 10 miles per hour in the stations. The thrill of it all. Yes, some of the specs have changed since the tunnel project was announced, uh, but it's not the scam as some proclaim. Let's see what he thinks that's cool about the system. It's cool because they're Teslas. Well, it might be cool for you, but I assure you to everyone else, they're just electric cars in tunnels. And it's cool because the project is the brainchild of visionary Elon Musk. Look, if you're boasting about how great a transport system is, usually the things that you go for, the metrics of a transport system is it moves lots of people, it moves them quickly, and it's cheap. So far, we've had none of this in your reasons for why this loop system is great. In fact, you know, this sentence makes a lot more sense if you substitute the word delusionary in there. It's cool because the project is the brainchild of delusionary Elon Musk. Anyway, it's cool because it's in Las Vegas. Yeah, I'm not sure this is selling it as a transport system. It's cool because the station, one of the stations is lit up like a nightclub. This is pure desperation, scratching at the bottom of the barrel. It's cool because conventions are incredibly boring. A way to stab the Las Vegas Convention Center who paid for this thing in the back. And the Vegas loop isn't. Seriously, the slow moving taxi rank in a tunnel is interesting. People will come from around the world to take the Vegas loop, even if they aren't attending the convention. Yeah, he's crazy. Now, it turns out that the loop did this test in which they were boasting that they had achieved 4,400 people per hour. Now, this was done by just having 300 people in their loop system, just driving basically round and round in circles, getting on and off the cars every now and again. So this is the absolute best case scenario where all the cars are 100% loaded and everyone is familiar with the system because they're just getting in and out of the cars on a regular basis. The absolute best case scenario. 
And you can do some fairly simple calculations and work out that that maximum optimum carrying capacity is about 3% well, of the carrying capacity of a metro. Boring tunnels have the potential to destroy subways in terms of cost and efficiency, and here's why. So with our loop system, there's four places you can depart from. So that means that if there's 4,000 people per hour in the whole system, each station or each departure point has about 1,000 people per hour departing in one direction, which was almost exactly the number I'd calculated from earlier videos. You've got five bays going in one direction, so the absolute maximum number of people is stationed in transport in one direction is about 1,000. Okay, keep that number in mind. 1,000 people per hour departing from a station in one direction. So just looking at some numbers on Twitter, you know, you get these urban cable car, which is transporting about 1,000 people per hour in one direction. That's comparable to this brand new uh, system of Elon Musk's. Or we can go up to a bus service where you're getting 90 people per bus, 26 departures per hour. That's 2,000 people per hour going in one direction or departing from any one point going in one direction. So that's twice the capacity of Elon Musk's system, just a simple bus service. Or light rail, you know, four times that. Or you get up to a decent metro system and you're looking at, yeah, Elon Musk's at about 2.5% of what a decent metro service is. But in many ways, we don't have to discuss this anymore. All of these promises of Elon Musk here turned out to be vaporware, demonstrably empty. When you're traveling 700 miles an hour, that is what Elon Musk says his new technology is capable of, and he is planning to put it right under our feet. It's no longer an opinion. It's a statement of historical Fact. I'm a common, a maybe I'm a god, zooming around the planet in my hyperloopin' pond. Now, I was actually deep into making the follow up to the Apollo 13 video, which I assure you is going to be fascinating on all sorts of levels, in that I'm actually trying to replicate the fire that crippled Apollo 13. Now, the ignition source for the Apollo 13 fire, and it's quite impressive, yeah? So you can quite happily imagine that this sort of thing is going to some liquid oxygen. If we pour it into a little test tube like this, yeah, it'll boil a little as it cools down. And then this guy starts bugging me on Twitter and spamming this at me. So I was kind of intrigued because I recognized this guy from this video. What if I told you that Elon Musk could make trillions of dollars by boring one set of tunnels connecting North America to Asia and do it cheap and make life better for everyone in the world? All he has to do is take the uh, tunnel project that took him about two years to complete one mile and extend it another uh, 6,000 miles and run a hyperloop in it. Yeah, that sounds sensible. You could ride by train from San Francisco to Beijing in a day and a half. A day and a half? Elon's going to do that in a supersonic hyperloop in like six hours. Yeah, that's utterly delusional. So having watched Elon Musk crash and burn on a project that's less than one mile long, having witnessed the scrapping of virtually every Elon Musk project, except the really slow moving underground taxi rank. I was curious as to see what his response would be. Well, the first 10 minutes of the video need to be seen to be believed. He didn't watch any of my videos and comes to these conclusions. Again and again, we're seeing that behavior. Now, is it that he's an incel or is his audience involuntary celibates? What is the reason for we're seeing all this? At some point, we're going to get to where he starts going after Elon Musk. One of my theories is that Phil is an incel. Phil is a person who did not get along well in his own countries. Yes, it's a classy and well thought out defense of the boring company from an Elon Musk fan. So was he hiding out in Czechoslovakia because he couldn't cut it in America or the UK? Is he hiding out in Czechoslovakia because it's easier for him to pay prostitutes in Czechoslovakia? Yeah, <laughs> truly this is a dizzyingly intellectual defense of the boring company. And on a side note, it would indeed be uh, 
impressive to hide out in a country called Czechoslovakia, seeing as there hasn't been a country called Czechoslovakia for the best part of 30 years. Hell, there hasn't been a country called Czechoslovakia this millennium. And in case you're wondering about his thorough methodology for determining my completely relevant sexuality here, well, he looked at some of my thumbnails and concluded my sexuality from those. Meanwhile, of course, if we take a look at his thumbnails, uh, yeah, there might be a lesson there about living in glass houses and throwing stones. Anyway, uh, like I said, back to one of Elon Musk's greatest fans vigorously defending the intellectual integrity of the boring company. You're a coward. You are someone who doesn't succeed in your own culture, who needed to run away and hide in a different culture. Yes, yes, run, run away and hide in a different culture. What's that word at the bottom of the page? Different cultures like um, Cornell University? And you're someone who doesn't do well with women, so you have to use sexualized pictures of women, pick on feminists, because you're not successful with women yourself. You weren't able to find a woman who loves you because you're fundamentally not lovable. You're not a person that people really like to spend time with. Oh, bravo. That's awesome. Yeah, when you spend 10 minutes going on like this, and this is your video defending the um, the slow-moving taxi rank in a tunnel, yeah, I think you might not have much of an argument. Now, of course, most sane people wouldn't consider this eh, deranged rambling for 10 minutes about what you perceive someone's sexuality to be based on nothing more than looking at their thumbnails of their videos to be terribly compelling. However, you're not an Elon Musk fan because some 90% of them thought this was a great video. Anyway, I could do a whole video on this guy. Uh, let me know what you think below. Uh, he does eventually get around to covering some actual facts, which again, he's Czechoslovakia levels of wrong on them. Like he spends all this time wondering why buses don't have doors that open into traffic. I've been to the Bendy bus. This is the, something that he's comparing the boring company system to. Look at all the doors on this bus. I, I don't see any on this side. I think there's a couple of doors on the other side, but you see all the doors. Well, which is kind of like saying, yeah, I, I, I've always wondered why planes don't fit ejection seats with buttons that fire the seats off right next to the stewardess call button. Or, you know, why don't they fit giant two foot spikes in the middle of steering wheels on cars? Look at all the doors on this bus. I, I don't see any on this side. I think there's a couple of doors on the other side, but you see all the doors. So let's see if I got this straight. It takes a minute to load or unload a four passenger car with four doors. And it takes a minute to unload a bendy bus with a hundred passengers because there's a lot of doors. You saw all the doors, right? My recollection of these buses is one, typically one, there's probably one door for each section. Maybe there's two doors on one of the sections of the bus. This is not something that has a lot of doors that's really, really efficient at getting people out. It's gonna take a lot longer to load or unload a bendy bus. Amazing. Every word of what you just said was wrong. Cool, so bendy buses exist in reality. So let's take a look at their actual functioning, shall we? With a tram going by in the background. Well, okay, it stopped and uh, there are people with bags going in and out. I'm sure that'll be just as easy in a car, people with dogs. People with walking sticks, you'll get all sorts going on and off these buses. And he is so right, he busted me so good. It took 20 seconds, not a minute, to load up a bendy bus. This is not something that has a lot of doors that's really, really efficient at getting people out. It's gonna take a lot longer to load or unload a bendy bus than it's going to take to load or unload a four passenger car. Elon's gonna do that in a supersonic hyperloop in like six hours. In the meanwhile, there is a $50 million boondoggle sat under Las Vegas. There is no prospect of this thing being self-drive anytime soon. There is no sign whatsoever of these mini buses that were promised. And you know, this isn't just out of the blue. This is after four years of research and development on this project. There is not a single sign that these things exist or will ever exist. And let's just say it did manage its four and a half thousand people in a test. 
realistic numbers for actual operation will probably be about half of that. Firstly, because people generally don't want to get into cars with strangers. Well, <laughs> if you're half the number of people in the cars, you have the number of people traveling on the system. And to get this number, they had to have an individual usher for every single loading point. And then, of course, most of the people who use this system will be visitors who don't use it on a regular basis, yeah, which, again, will clutter things up and slow things down. And these aren't like metro trains or urban buses that were designed from when the ink first hit the design sheet for rapid entry and egress. These are regular cars. I mean, further, trains have been designed for rugged use. God knows what these cars are going to look like after a year or so, when, you know, on average, three or four people are getting into these cars every three or four minutes. And the bizarre thing is, though, after all of this, you would expect at some point, you know, it's obvious to everyone that the emperor has no clothes on. However, there are still people committed to the lie. And that's today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a thumbs up on it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you don't want to miss out on more videos like this, you can subscribe or hit the notification bell. And as ever, if you really like the work of this channel and want to support it directly, you can do it through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching.